On June 15, 2023, Sarah Elrod Osbrook reported to her large Facebook group details of Richard Allen's numerous confessions that nobody else in court reported. Members of Sarah's group listened to her live video after court adjourned as she reported on details that she heard that day. 5,000 of the 42,000 members in her group heard this reporting, but most members of the public did not hear the extent of these confession details until court filings in 2024. Sarah gave an account of what she heard and saw in court that day including testimony from Sheriff Tobe Lesenby, Deputy Sheriff Tony Liggett, and Warden John Gallipo. This is part one. So again, this was supposed to be a suppression hearing on, a, on the evidence that people wanted in and felt like it needed to be in. And now I understand as far as the medical records and the mental health records, why the defense was to keep them out. Supposedly during these times in it, on multiple times, he, Richard Allen admitted his part in this, um, in the murders of Abby and Libby. Um, it's no, there's probably really no way around it. And in fact, his attorney towards the end, uh, you know, admitted that at some point in time, it will come out to a jury about these admissions of what he admitted to. Um, I think he's playing along the lines of more of the mental health line. I don't think he made a, he, he does look gaunt and he, he's probably down, I would say between 140 to 150 pounds, 150 pounds. Um, he is five, now according to the record, and I like kind of like about the wall, the best I can get, he is probably five, five. He does not look like anything like the guy on the bridge now, but um, we did get information. Let's see, on the, let me grab my notes real quick, hold on. And I'll give you a, like a brief rundown of who the defense called. Um, it was their most, it was their uh, due process hearing for him. And so we'll go through who the defense called and then I will go and give you kind of a brief thing that, that they get questioned about. The morning pretty well um we got there the court door, the doors open at eight and i think there was three ahead of us which i don't know some people mistook the time and once the courtroom was full it was full they just didn't let you in um as far as family um all the family members uh for libby was there and abby um and family members for Alan, for Richard Allen, his mom and his wife was there. Kathy looks much thinner, looks like it's taken a toll on her, probably more so than anything. Um, she, the first time she actually got to see him was the beginning of May when her, when his attorney took her up there. But let me grab my notes real quick. down and get my little notebook out. Where is that, please? I think it's on the back seat. Oh, inside? Whenever, yes, inside the car. Well, um, we'll start off ready. with, like, um, so the defense came in, prosecution came in, then w they walked Alan in. He comes in from the back of the, of the courtroom and walks up the side, <clears throat> in the side where he sat. I mean, he walked his wife was at the outmost seat next to her, his mom. And there was three seats saved there. And in that third seat, there was a, appeared to be a reporter. She was taking notes. I don't know if that, nobody filled that seat or, but, but, or maybe it was for her. Um, on the family, on Libby and Abby's family, um, grandparents, both sets of grandparents was there. Um, Carrie was there, let's see, Anna and her family, her, 
her mom and dad, uh, Aunt Tara, Libby's aunt, um, Kelsey, um, she was there with her friend. Um, half the courtroom was pretty well reserved for like the family members and the detectives and anybody that worked the case. So the judge started off that first, there are going to be documents that are currently sealed, that will be unsealed and gave to the public. Um, it will be next Monday and I'll link the page down here. She's gonna, she's gonna put out where we can go and you can actually go to the web, her web, her web page and look at the documents as you choose. You don't have to rely on somebody going and getting them for you. They'll be on her, her sheet alone, on her website alone. And so it's several things that can be um, unsealed, she will be unsealing. And that has to do with motion from the media and from the murder sheet um, because they had a blanket coverage as far as sealing everything. So I don't know what items, they never did say what items as far as that will be, which will come out and be released to the public. But as more that came up later on in the day. So then she went in and explained to us that this was not gonna be a suppression hearing any longer. And um, explained that that would be set for another day. And so we were all kind of like looking at each other at this point, you know. Um, the acoustics in the courtroom were not very good at all. Um, we were fortunate because we were in the front rows. So we were able to hear a lot of what was said. Um, there's going to probably be some people that are kind of upset with Mr. Rossi, but he, we got to remember he's doing his job as an, a defense attorney and in our courts, everybody is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Um, so anyway, the judge explained the suppression hearing was going to be rescheduled and some other motions. And she's not, she, at the end of the day, she said, I'm not real firm about dates. So she's flexible about that. His attorney do, does not want to waive a speedy trial, um, but the soonest that she could get it on her docket was in January. So uh, trial will start January 8th and run through the, tw schedule it through the 26th of January uh, of 2024. Um, the, as you know, the jury will come out of Allen County. The, also, um, they will do like the, oh, the jury, they'll be handled up in Allen County too. They only have to come down here to Carroll County. Um, she'll take care of the jury up there. Both sides, the defense and the state will go up there in Allen County. So that will be up there um, for the jury selection. And as you know, they're gonna be brought down here. They'll be sequestered for them three weeks. Um, so then, Let's see, then his attorney started in and it's weird. I mean, I, I don't think anybody expected him to say what he said, that his client um, in the poor condition that he's in me medically, mentally, whatever, uh, but that he has admitted that he did commit the crimes. Um, on multiple occasions, he's admitted this to multiple healthcare and mental health people along with other staff. So I don't know how many times, and I don't know who, who all, they haven't got into that yet because that's part of the evidence. So we're not likely going to get a whole lot more of that for right now, because that's part of those records that the defense was able to keep and not give to the state yet. <laughs> The state can't use them yet, but the defense did say that likely those were going to come up in in the court in the jury, and they will. Um, then they were talking about due process, and back in April, or was it April, March, April, somewhere on there, when he t went in there to the prison at Westfield. Mr. Rossi, um, he took the pictures of Alan, <clears throat> Richard Allen, and he looked real, real thin, gone, and he did today. Um, 
But we got a little bit more background on that too. And those were not his normal clothing. Um, that day that he looked like that with the dirty clothing, he had been out on the wreck, what they call the wreck, and they get an hour of that five times a week, um, which has got a basketball goal. Um, it has different things they can do outside and they get an hour, five times a, a week. But he didn't know his attorney apparently was coming that day. Then um, he was arguing, they got into the argument over due process and he wanted him moved. I mean, he wants him moved out at Westfield Correctional. I, I, I kind of read the judge, maybe I shouldn't have had, but I kind of got a feeling he ain't gone anywhere because Nobody really wants to take over the care in custody of him. Um, Cass County, which is next to Carroll County, agreed that they would house him, but they're not going to transport him. And Carroll County says, well, we're not transporting him. We're not, we don't have the means. We don't have the personnel, which they are a very small force here in the county. And um, it got kind of heated back and forth between Nick and um, Mr. Rossi over that. So they called, the first one they called was uh, uh, that sheriff, Tobe Lesenby. And it was over the safekeeping um, document that moved, actually moved, caused the move of uh, Richard Allen from out of Carroll County to White County, where he was for about a week, and then moved to Westfield Correctional Center. <clears throat> and um, Mr. Rossi went kind of hard on him about the document, and he wanted to know, in fact, did you yourself write this document? And, you know, he said, well, I had the words there, but I didn't know how to state it, so, you know, he had some help from an attorney, which they do have county attorneys, and, but that, that was not, I don't think, what Rossi was wanting to hear. I think he wanted to hear it came from the prosecution, which it didn't. Anyway, so, and then she's getting my notes and we'll talk a little bit more. Oh, so we might have lost the notes, but they're somewhere. They're somewhere here. Anyway. They're in your purse. Are you really? Yes. They were in my purse. So, um, <coughs> Again, like I said, Rossi thinks. Rossi is the one that called Tob Lesenby to the stand. So he was up there, I'd say probably about a half hour. He was, as far as in the morning, he was probably one of the ones, the longest ones up there. And then we had, um, let's see, the next in line came. And they talked about, um, oh, that was. Let's see. There was several YouTubers up there um, that we all know. Um, and some you guys love, some guys you don't. So the safekeeping order and the due process pretty well is what they covered today. Um, and that he did admit to um, the crimes, um, not only to the staff, but he has admitted. Um, also, Tony Liggett went up to Westfield to interview him again, but it didn't take place. And all he knows that he went up sometime in the first of this year to re-interview him, but that didn't take place. Something happened. And anyway, so Lesenby was kind of drilled over the document. There was nothing wrong with the doc document. And so, but they were just trying to figure out who worded it for him because I guess they thought he wasn't smart enough to put those words together in that legal mumble jumble, which actually an attorney helped him with that part, which would be common. Um, let's see. And then, so then they questioned him why they can't keep him safe in Carroll County. Well, <laughs> then again, I think they can hold. 10 prisoners over here, 20, I can't remember. It's a really small place. I'll try to get a picture of it. Um, and then, as you know, he after he left Carroll County, he was moved to White County until they placed him in, um, he went through the center of IDOC and was moved to, to Westfield. 
the max capacity for um, for Carroll County is 34 inmates, and that's no high risk ones. That's like your everyday drunk drivers, your people that don't pay child support, stuff like that. Um, Cass County, on the other hand, they have a capability of holding 290, and a, they're in the way of adding 150 more beds or cells. So um, after after him, um, let's see, after that, who came up after Lazenby? Lazenby really got drilled over that big time. His attorney, okay, and then, okay, there was this young man, he was, his name was Max Baker. He was 20 years old, he's from Logansport, and he's an intern for Mr. Rossi. Um, and he went to visit um, their client, Mr. Allen, up at Westfield. And he had seen him in different times. The same protocols weren't being followed. And in May, um, he had seen him a total of four times in May, the last being May 30th. And um, the first time when they were up there, they were allowed to take cell phones into the prison. Well, the that is not standard um, operation protocols for IDOC, so that had to be dealt with. Um, and he he does have, he he had on, when it, anytime he's moved, he has like this, what they call a black box chain around him, which has his hands, his feet, a belt that goes around his waist, and then there's a black box um, on his back. And what that is is actually a device and it looks like a vest that comes over it. It's it's not a, it, it's actually like if somebody would get out of hand that they could um, use like an electrical charge, um, like taste, like you would get tased if you act it up. Um, standard when they when they move these people, it's, it's a very high risk thing. I really, I just really think she's going to keep in there. Anyway, this Max ba Baker complained also about any time they had to move um, Mr. Allen in the prison system, it would take four to six guards to move him, which that's pretty normal in uh, Max security. Um, but we got to remember, he's not been convicted yet, but he is a high profile. He's high profile. They're keeping him safe, so we want him alive for the trial. Um Back in the complaint that Mr. Rossi filed, he said the cells were real little, were like 10 by 6. Actually, they are 14 feet by 8.5 feet. And he does have a bed, but the bed is bolted down to the ground. Um, he has mattress. He has all kinds of clothes. Um, he has bought... Um, a lot of clothing from the commissary along with food. Um, he has clean underclothes, clean t-shirts, but he's got everything he needs. He does exercise. He exercises inside uh, his cell and he exercises out on in the rec area. There were some complaints from the defense <clears throat> as far as feeling like they couldn't talk with their client because um, there's all there's always videotaping going on which that's normal except these guys was going as far as when time they moved mr. Allen they would have a handheld video <laughs> and videotape him being moved um, he did have a companion what they call companion they have a companion program and it's for high risk people, people at high risk that may be suicidal. Um, they have two types of um, companion, the companion program. They have like um, trustees at a prison that have gained it and have been well behaved. Some of them are getting close to the end of their sentences. Anyway, they sit outside the high risk people that may be um, oh, suicidal and they'll just keep an eye on them. They're not allowed to talk to, uh, to each other. Um, but this changed for um, Richard Allen about a month, about six weeks ago. He ended up getting a companion, but it turned out 
since he turned back being suicidal, um, he um, ends up now he has a police, uh, corrections officer that is his companion that sits outside his cell 24-7, and then there's also a, a camera inside his cell that they monitor 24-7. So, and in that area, in that detention area, in that detention area, um, there's 55 men in that unit, um, in that pod. And it sounds like it's like the administrative type. Um, it, like, you get moved there when you're bad. Uh, they're single cells, only hold one person. So, um, and only five have cameras. Only five of the cells have cameras and they save those for the ones that are having a rough time adjusting um, to, um, you know, life inside behind closed doors. And uh, let's see, the next guy they called was Cass County Sheriff. And he explained that it's about a 30 minute drive from Cass County to Carroll County. He was willing to put him up and basically he'd be in the same size cell that he's in now. And he would be under more as far as videotaping, he, he would be videotaped even with, with his attorney there, but there's no audio turned on when the attorneys are there. So anyway, there's no way around that. That's just the state, their policy. And he would not have mental health or medical care 24-7 uh, like he d does now up at the prison. So then that ended the morning. Um, then they um, went up, the attorneys were, one of them wanted to take a break to go to the bathroom. And it was about, it was around noon or five after, and they, the judge talked to them a little bit and they decided they'd break until 1.15 and because the state had two people they wanted to put on to question in regards to safekeeping and keeping Alan safe till the trial. So anyway, we all took a quick break. Um, they let Alan out and he, he went by his mom and his sister, I mean his mom and his wife again. And they took him out and then we all left. The judge allowed us to all leave then. So then we come back and the first time when he came in, when they brought Alan back in again, he actually looked at his mom and his wife and said, love you, and smiled at him. So he did recognize them and did know them. He was engaging with them. Um, the, the mom, when she first saw him this morning, she let out kind of like a small cry. She was shocked at his appearance. So um, that was kind of, I kind of was surprised too about how he looked. But then after I found out he's been exercising inside his cell, he, he does, he will refuse to eat sometimes, but he has junk, he has junk food inside his cell. If he wants it, he does not have to. Um, he did eat yesterday okay he ate breakfast this morning in order for them to step in he has to miss four meals <coughs> and once he misses four meals and that's considered a hunger strike and then then they go a different route to feed you with a feeding tube and all that so anyway his bmi and his weight and everything are all considered within normal limits. And there is nothing physically wrong with him. Um, mentally, his attorneys really push the mental issues. I don't know if there's gonna be more that's gonna come back about that. Um, but um, it, it was kind of sad that, because unfortunately I don't think we'll ever know why it happened, why this ha happened to them two girls. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know unless he told them. And I guess we'll hear about that during the trial. Um, then we went to come back from lunch and let's see. Uh, Tony Liggett, the sheriff came up, they called him in and he got on the stand and they questioned him for about 30 minutes. Um, Mr. Rossi was, he was kind of, he's, he's a pretty aggressive, um, defense attorney, I, I would hire him, I mean, but Mr. Liggett told him, he said, there's no possible way that we can keep him safe here. And there isn't, I mean, 
somebody would want to be a hero, you know, get their name famous for taking him out, you know. It, and now that it's came out and it's going to come out more that he admitted that he did it. So anyway, they're going to try to keep some hearings to a limit and not have a bunch of hearings and try to combine them. So we'll probably have another hearing, I would say, within the next six weeks, maybe sooner than that, because there's other things they have to go through. I'm sorry, again, you're looking at the keyboard, but I am tired. <laughs> so I thought I'd come on here real quick and give you guys what we had so far. I'm going to look through the questions real quick that Terry sent me. Um, and I realize I am not a professional. I told you guys I'm not a professional newscaster, and nor do I want to be. But if you're having a heart attack, I might be able to save your life. But as far as the other goes, no, I don't. Um, I'm not a broadcaster. Um, there was a lot of media, but by the time they got in there, oh, basically only us in the front row could really hear anything. Uh, it was really, the acoustics was really bad. Um, they ended the day, I thought he was, he was on the stand the longest, and it was the warden from Westfield. And actually, Richard Allen gets more things free and done for him than prisoners do. Um, he also gets one-on-one -on -one FaceTime visits with his family, but he has to request them, which he knows how to do, but he refuses to do it. So that's up to him to do. So anyway, in that prison, nobody else would get FaceTime, face it, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with their loved ones, but he will. Um, he also has a tablet. Um, he can rent movies, download music, and make phone calls. Um, he's not on chirping type thing. There's no chirping. Um, his tablet got damaged, and everybody's issued one. And usually they make the inmate pay $250 to get a new one or get a different one, but they did not charge him. They went ahead and gave him one. I imagine they'll probably bill Carroll County, I would say. Um, Did you tell them about he wears the same outfit? Yeah, the, so the warden was up there the longest out of anybody question, probably a good 45 minutes, yeah. I would say. Yeah. And he was very professional, but he kind of reminded me of somebody else I know right, real well. You can tell they're very, they work at an institution because everything is answered with sir. He did have a military background too, this guy did. Um, very professional, I mean, Mr. Royalty was really trying to work him up, which he could not get done. He did support his staff up at Westfield, and he also defended IDOC. And so anyway, at the end of the day, uh, the judge said that she would put out her ruling in a written format, and we can also we'll have some documents on uh, Monday. I believe, yeah, I believe she said Monday, next early next week. And we'll find that. We'll give you the site to go to look for those. But that will be on her website. She'll be in control of what gets uh, unsealed and what doesn't. So anyway, if you have any more questions, um, just shoot them on here. And we'll go from there. Um, I'm trying to find where Terry's questions or I don't know where she went. But it was real long night. I, 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 I have to admit, I wasn't prepared for what I saw when I saw him. I don't think too many people were quite prepared. He, he looked not, I mean, his head looked the same. He had the shaved head. But I think most of the guys up there, they do. Um, so here's Terry's list of questions. And let's see. So basically, he's exercising in his cell and out on the yard. Um, Amanda asked, list of evidence revealed and family's reaction. It was like the rest of us. We were all kind of like, <gasps> and also the prosecution used the same language as the defense as far as him admitting to committing the crimes. Um, Bill Manning, yeah, his wife and his mom both were there. Um, I felt kind of sorry for the mom because it's like, she's older and when she first seen him, she's, she hadn't seen him since he's been in jail. So this was her first time seeing her son and yeah, there was a gasp and a cry. Um, 
and his wife looks like she's lost a lot of weight. She looks a lot thinner, and she looks very she looks tired. Um, but you can imagine that. Um, defendant's body language. Um, he's. I mean, he sat right in front of us. He was kind of leaned over to one side, slumped down in a chair like he saw in that picture. And then other times he'd perk up. You could see him chatting with with the different the older attorney, uh, Mr. Baldwin. He would chat with him. They would. He he. I saw him write down something one time. So he was interacting at times, and then other times he looked like he was just dazed and like either didn't want to be there or didn't know where he was. And the warden brought that up during that time, and he was when he was is that sometimes he will. Richard Allen will be engaging with other people, and other times he just doesn't engage with anybody. Um, And you never know from day to day which Richard Allen you're going to get when he's like that. Um, But the warden was extremely professional, and I really gave him props for standing by his people that worked for him. Um, Yep, uh, Peter, the families were all there, both, all of them. RA's body language, um, to me, it's like one of almost like damned if I do, damned if I don't, I'm just done. To me, that's, I mean, we talk, several of us talked about that, is that he just, it's like, I'm done, <laughs> you know? I don't know if that's really his, um, now they did, They are going to push, they wanted to, they are not going to waive his, he wants a speedy trial, so it's going to go to trial. Um, the defense and the prosecution both agreed in January, and that's when it will happen. Uh, in fact, his attorney said if we keep pushing, if we keep pushing up, it would just be more stuff to worry about. And so, anyway, his true height right now, I would say, is five four, five five. But you really could not look at him today and be fair about it and compare him to Bridge Guy, because. His whole body and his mannerisms when he walks, he does have the hunched shoulders still, <laughs> which, like, you know, does. He 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 does look like bridge guy. Uh, what little bit you could see of him when he walked, even and in the shackles. even in the shackles, you can kind of you, you definitely can pick up. And looking from the back of him, I don't know. It's just something that made him stand out. His shoulders or something really stuck out to me. Um, so Will Finders, Ari's true height, I would say is five four five five. I know I'm five two. He ain't very much taller than I am. Uh, which of the see Bat, Brett uh, or Bet which of the family members attended see all of Abby's grandma and grandpa, her mom, um, I think an aunt was no, I didn't see grandpa there. There was another couple other family members there. Uh, Libby's grandparents, uh, Carrie, uh, Libby's bi- uh, mom, and um, her aunt Tara, and her other aunt. I didn't see Derek there today. Um, let's see. There was a younger one. And then there were several of, of Tara's kids there at the courthouse. Cindy Pierce, evidence against RA what they found at the house of any DNA. They did not discuss any evidence. Now that may come out, come out when they release the paperwork next week. I don't know, Chris Baker, if they will do a plea agreement, which they may. If, if this stuff is allowed in and they can't prove that, he's not unfit to stand trial by any means. He recognizes people and he relates. I mean, he 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 just sometimes just don't want to do anybody. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I would say he he could possibly plea. I don't know. I mean, basically he's going to jail for life anyway. Uh, he's not getting out. Uh, Sherry. He did not speak at all, other except to his mom and his sister when he come when we come back from lunch, and we watched him. And we, I was, me and my friend were sitting right next to his mom and his wife. And as he walked by, he noticed and looked at him. And um, Mr. Baldwin had been talking to him earlier, 
to the mom and to the wife. And then he, when he came back into the courthouse, he made sure he told her he loved him when he saw him. And I think they let him before. And then... They, they stayed in there for um, a while. Then after the, like I said, after all this, they went into the ex parte hearing. So we really don't know what took place there. They must have st let the, them stay in there because they walked them out privately uh, to their cars. And that would have been about 15, 20 minutes later. Um, but his attorney will probably argue mental health. I don't know, but he's engaging with other people. There's days he don't wanna engage, but if he's exercising in his cell, and they say his BMI is perfect for his body. His vitals are all, everything's within normal limits now. He's not heavy. Um, but they said he's never went more, he has never reached what they call a food strike. A food strike is considered four days in a row of not eating. So if he cuts back, he cuts back. Um, but it's up to him to fill out the paperwork. So no, there, Terry, there's no coat court tomorrow. Yes, um, there was an audible gasp, um, but I think it didn't come from them. I think, um, Peter, I think his family had already heard about it. Um, they were on the total opposite room, uh, side of the room. Uh, one family, uh, Libby and Abby's family was what I would consider on the, let me make sure I got my directions right, on the west side of the courthouse in the courtroom and his family was on the east, his mom and his wife. He does, he does look, he is healthy probably, you're right, uh, Jackie, um, but he's, he's he, you definitely get that slouch. Yes, his wife was in court. Um, he did tell her he loved her, he loved him when he walked by. Uh, no, the death penalty won't, it, this is, do the way they charged him, that's not a death penalty case. Um, all, you got to remember, all he, all the state really has to prove that is that he kidnapped him, and by him kidnapping him, it caused their death. Now, it doesn't, they have not, yeah, it, Peter, I agree, his, it was sad for his mother, because I think, she, or, that was the first time she'd seen him in seven months, I think, and she wasn't prepared. Even the picture didn't prepare me in, when I saw him, and but he did tell him that he loved him. Um, I it was almost like he was ready to like, hey, let's let's get this over with. I mean, Mr. Baldwin, the older attorney, he said we need to get this over with. It's like okay, well then let's just go with it. But anyway, they do got hearing. They got to reschedule some hearings <clears throat> uh, for some more motions. But yeah, I mean, it was hard not to have feelings. When you heard his mom weep, um, she did roll on the one, and she did. It, she weep. She cried, and I mean, we were sitting right there, and it was. It was. It kind of. It did break your heart. I, I don't care who you are. If you don't have some, I mean, they didn't commit the crimes. You got to remember that, um, and they still got to live in this area, and that's that's sad. Um, but yeah, you can tell it's taken a toll, definitely on Kathy, um, his wife, and. Again, you know, you gotta, people need to remember she didn't commit the crime he did unless she covered it up, which I don't think she did. Right, right, Angela. He is healthy, yes. Um, yeah, people were shocked at his size, but he's health, healthy. Yeah, he'll be fine. He has not gone longer than four days without any food, or that would be considered a food strike. So then they can do other things for them. Um, I I don't know it. I mean, as far as the community support, his family too, I, I couldn't tell because really there wasn't a ton of local people in there. Um, we did, we spoke to them and they spoke to us. I mean, I wasn't gonna mistreat them. Um, but it, it was kind of hard to, to hear that mother cry like that. But, you know, I also think about she'll still get to see her son, but it's hard on them too. Um, I, I don't know if he's the type that will survive prison or not, because you take a 50 year old man who's been free his whole life and you put him behind bars, you know? Yeah, like so I really, yeah, it's, uh, Peter, I agree. 
agree that the community needs to help them too, but there's only so much they can do. So, but, um, let's see, any other questions? Type them in. He is healthy, Laura. He's depressed. That is very obvious. He looks like he might need to be put on some medication. Uh, of course, I'm not going to share mine with him, but he has access to health care mental, and mental care 24 hours, seven days a week up at Westfield. But if they moved him to Cass County, he would not get that. Um, met, all they have is medical, and then they have mental health that comes in so many hours a week. So does anybody else have any other questions? I'm sorry about the keyboard, guys, but <laughs> I'm wore out. <laughs> but again, it was it was it was truly one of those moments I didn't plan on hearing. Uh, I thought we were going to be there all day in different motions. Other than I knew I'd been told by somebody it was going to be a long day, and I think for. 100% that his family knew that he had pled, that he had already admitted to different people at that. And his own attorneys, it sounded like he admitted to the Baldwin. But anyway, we will have to wait to see how it plays out. Um, but they do want this trial to get done, get over with. I have a question, even though I'm not on there. Um, did you relate to them that that they sealed the Oh yeah, um, on his cl on his clothing. Um, what happens is they they pick up the dirty clothing on Wednesday and deliver clean clothing on Thursday. Well, you get three outfits, but you can buy extra outfits, and that's what he did. He has extra clean shirts. Um, his attorney was just playing it up, but you gotta remember that's his attorney. Um, I did want to stand up there and go and get him again when he compared him to a POW because trust me, <laughs> no, he's not done like a POW. And he brought that up and I, he, he said, in my own words, in my terms, he tried to like backpedal that word once he used it. It was like, too late, you don't let it out again. <laughs> you know, I think that hurt him. And the dirty clothes, and the dirty clothes was not really dirty. His, his T-shirt is stained, but he also had been out at the, on the wreck. And outside, and he had a chance to go change clothes and put clean clothes on before meeting with his attorney. So that photo was probably pretty staged. And I don't think his attorneys are very happy with the warden up there. But, you know, I'm sure there's many, many attorneys not happy with that warden up there. But he was extremely professional. Um, the captain over the shift that has him um, during the daytime testified to what he eats, what he does during the day, what he's allowed to do, um, you know, and he also explained, they explained how um, the, the companion program up there, and that didn't go over too well with um, Rossi, but that's what they do. I think it's a good program, and they get paid from, I guess from my, I understand they get paid from the state, these, um, men that are about to probably be released or whatever they're they turn them into what are they called uh, like away. porters um and they let them do stuff but they're not allowed to talk to the inmates so yeah, I can't talk but anyway i'm sure we'll have some more stuff come up here that we remember we'll go back through notes and go through them um, the biggest thing that we took away from it is that he has on multiple occasions admitted to it um to doing the crime and both sides said that, but his attorney said it first. He didn't say a word. Um, the only word he spoke was to his mom and his wife when, when he said, I love you. And um, he made direct eye contact with them and then turned and looked towards me. He's like, I'm not a family. Don't tell me that. <laughs> it's like, oh, hide. <laughs> but super nice people. Um, there was uh, so many police. There was conservation there helping. Um, DNR was there, Indiana State Police. There were some FBI guys, um, Jerry Holman. Uh, Doug Carter was not there. But I think that's about all I've got for right now. And if you want to throw up some questions here, I'll go back and just individually answer those if you want to post them under here. But you guys all have a good time. Good night.
and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks.